Hello everybody, we are kicking off another episode of the show where you find out what's happening in Brazil. Check out the week's latest news. July 25th celebrates International Black, Latin American and Caribbean Women's Day. In Brazil, the date is usually commemorated with marches all over the country and events spearheaded by black women. This year, however, events were held online due to the coronavirus pandemic. The occasion serves to amplify these women's voices, seeing as they, unfortunately, still are the biggest victims of violence in Brazil's socioeconomic pyramid. On the same date, the struggles of Quilombola leader Teresa de Benguela are also celebrated, Quilombolas being the residents of rural farming communities founded by runaway slaves. Teresa de Benguela was one of the movement's leaders in the 18th century, at the height of the slave trade, when she led a quilombo community of more than 3,000 people in the state of Mato Grosso. Her community was comprised of black, white, and indigenous people who lived together bravely resisting slavery for more than 20 years. This week, 152 bishops, archbishops, and former clergymen from the National Conference of Bishops published a document called A Letter to God's People, in which they harshly criticized Brazil's President Jair Bolsonaro, especially in relation to the COVID-19 pandemic. In the document, they state that by analyzing the current political context without bias, it becomes clearly evident that the federal government is incapable of dealing with the crisis. Furthermore, they affirm that Bolsonaro's anti-scientific discourse goes against the ethical and moral principles of the Catholic Church. According to the bishops, the movement echoes sentiments felt inside churches and parishes, where clergymen complain of political persecution due to criticism of the Bolsonaro government in masses or private conversations with the faithful. Brazil is undergoing a process interiorization of COVID-19. That means that the number of cases is going up in small cities and the countryside. This is what has been happening in the state of Pernambuco, situated in the country's northeast. Faced with this scenario, the Hands of Solidarity campaign has come up with a course to instruct health agents in the country's interior. With the advance of the coronavirus into the countryside of Pernambuco state, rural social movements are articulating to engage in raising awareness and increasing preventive care in their communities. This month, the first graduates of a program educating field health agents in a landless workers' movement settlement completed the course. The health field agent for the rural population has the important role of transmitting the necessary information about prevention when leaving these communities and going into the city so that they don't get contaminated and bring back to their settlements and encampments in the countryside. While speaking to the settlers, emphasis is given to community knowledge, self-care, and the care for others. The moment requires us to reinvent ourselves as a working class in our social organization. Who are these rural health field agents? They are people from the community, local leaders, who are responsible for taking this knowledge and information based on science to where they live. Born in Recife, the state capital of Pernambuco, the rural health field agents already have 12 groups in the metropolitan region with others being established in other municipalities. The initiative has also spread and reached other states in Brazil, like São Paulo, Bahia and Alagoas. First and foremost, we seek out community knowledge, like from midwives, healers, prayer, among other things, like with those who use medicinal plants. With this, we are getting the community involved as well. So, this is what we call people taking care of people. The Quilombos, which are farming communities founded by former slaves, represent one of the main forms of resistance against slavery, and today are important enclaves of African culture in the country. They had and continue to have great significance in Brazil's culture formulation. However, even with such social cultural relevance in the country, the Quilombolas are residents of these farming communities have received no support from the Jair Bolsonaro government to combat the pandemic. Traditional populations like indigenous communities and quilombolas are some of the most affected by the coronavirus pandemic. There have been more than 400 quilombolas infected in the country and 130 deaths. Even in the face of this grave scenario, President Jair Bolsonaro vetoed parts of a bill that sought to address the need of these populations. Among the points he rejected are the government's obligation to provide clean water, food, hospital beds, as well as other emergency measures. Taking our degree of vulnerability into account, 
this only furthers the extermination of traditionalist populations. Issues like access to water, to land, to public policies all show the degree of the president's lack of responsibility. It shows how vulnerable our people are. Due to the neglect on the part of the federal government, communities have sought to implement collective preventive measures at the local level, which have resulted in this community in Sierra State not having registered a single case up till now. We have been engaged in several battles within the community to ensure families don't get contaminated. We have been seeking help from our partners, the municipality, outside the municipality, from the state government, from social movements, so that we can acquire masks, food baskets, so we can help families travel only if necessary, so they don't run the risk of getting infected and neither bringing the virus here to the community. Aurila Maria points out that racism contributes to making these communities suffer even more. I see that the Quilombola movement is being deeply affected by structural and institutional racism, which has always kept us in the shadows. But this hasn't made us give up the fight. With the intervention of our ancestors, of our deities, with our collective wisdom, we will survive and overcome all these problems and have many victories in the future. In today's Brazilian is more recipes stemming from agroecology. Today we are going to make farm bread. I had already put the many of flour to soak. Now I'm gonna put it in this container. I'm also gonna add a little corn flour. It's the dough's consistency that will determine the amount. I add a little salt and a little coconut oil. Add more water. Be careful to not make it too gooey. Bread we need to mix with our hands. Since it's a little dry, I'll add some more water. Now, a little more manioc flour. We get a frying pan and let it warm up on the fire. Mush the bread and shape it. Oil the pan and put the bread in it. It's necessary to lower the heat to make a little stove so it can cook. Keep your eye on it and flip it so the other side can cook. Cover it up again. And here you go, it's ready. This is what we call manioc bread or farm bread. If you enjoyed the video, click the like button, share and subscribe to Brazil de Fato's channel to stay tuned to our latest content. We'll see you next week.